So this line uh, goes on to highlight the importance of, of not only concept of altruism, uh, how it is, how important it is to benefit others and oneself by primarily prioritizing the practice of uh, altruism, of uh, uh, generating bodhicitta for the sake of others. But it also also alludes to the fact that not only it is something uh, most important of all endeavors that one should pursue from here onwards. But also it says that all the failures and sufferings that we have encountered in our time that, that has just passed is primarily so because we have failed to practice altruism. Because all suffering derived from one's own selfishness, all happiness derived from, from unselfish acts. This has been echoed in the teachings of Bodhicharya Uttara by Shantideva, as well as many other teachings have explained uh, the importance of shifting the first of, of others uh, then to that of one's own. Since one has always been so used in thinking one's own welfare, but has proven to be very unsuccessful, would it not be timely to consider otherwise? Because the Bodhisattva has therefore put forward this idea of changing uh, what the priority of once that was uh, high on the agenda previously, rather uh, to that of the placing that uh, uh, prioritizing the agenda, the welfare of other living beings above one's own. Because all suffering, if suffering originated from one's uh, being selfish uh, for oneself and has failed to bring any happiness but brought on his suffering, therefore one should consider now trying exactly opposite that is prioritizing the welfare of other living beings and not think about oneself. By doing this, the great uh, exponents of the doctrine of the altruism, those who follow the uh, teachings and, and uh, try to emulate the deeds of the Bodhisattvas, have made prayers as echoed in this line, as made the sufferings of all living beings in three realms of existence, and I can upon myself, and may all the meritorious virtues that I have earned may all be taken away by other sentient beings. These two lines echo the importance of exchanging one's happiness with the sufferings of that of others. First of all, one must aspire, wish and make prayers before one actually becomes capable of practically doing it. Until one trains one's separate prayers, such as one echoed here, such as saying that may, let, may all sufferings of sentient beings in three realms ripen upon myself. One has to be very different to say these prayers so that actually one wish and willing to forbear if that were to happen. Not only that, one actually wishes that one has a lot of merit and happiness, and big enough an amount to give to all sentient beings. Therefore wish that may all meritorious deeds of our, that, that I have acquired be taken away and enjoyed by all sentient beings. This imaginative prayer of wishing one's happiness to be taken away by others has to be first be trained in prayer. Then actually, actually it happens, if it ever happens that someone were to take something that of one's own, one never become uh, uh, subjected to suffering because one has wished just that, to, to, so that every, uh, other beings take away one's happiness. So in this way, the Bodhisattva's uh, entire teachings contained in Lamdre or other teachings that could be taught in a very elaborate way is actually contained in these very two lines which primarily concerns to change, uh, change one's uh, focus uh, that has been concerned about oneself now to the concern and welfare of other living beings. If one were to continue to think of welfare of other living beings, there will be less suffering indeed, but more happiness uh, possibly for coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
So this way, Prabhupada Gyanisa uh, concludes the meaning of the third line by saying that may the any blessings that may derive from practicing the one's happiness to others and to keep taking the sufferings of others, may all these attain the state of enlightenment. So this teaching, this two, this third line is uh, the meaning of the uh, how one should abandon attachment for one's own purpose. Because if that is so, one wouldn't have any uh, any uh, pinch or bodhicitta or practice of bodhisattva. So therefore, uh, this uh, third line uh, shows the the importance of not only practicing bodhicitta but also practice of exchanging one's happiness to the sufferings of others. If one prioritizes these as in and one's everyday life, one would not only find happiness of that of one's own, that is much that cultivate appreciative joy in however little things we may have, but nevertheless the wish of one's own enables oneself that to dedicate for other living beings. However heavy a suffering beings may undergo going through, one has the courage and determination to be able to take on uh, with this bodhisattva idea. So that concludes the meaning of the third line. Now just meaning of the last line, that is that if you have grasping, it is not correct view. In order to elucidate that meaning, the Chakvagyanzin goes on to say that while considering the meaning of this, whichever I were to uh, consider myself, I should dwell in the nature of dharmata. Dharmata meaning that I should remain in the nature of the truth, whatever the truth abides in itself. If truth abides in itself, thus is free from the duality or dichotomy of existential and nihilistic grasping. If there is a grasping, there will be no attachment. Therefore, since grasping is the grasping and clinging is the cause of suffering, it is important to know how to avoid these two extremities. One who has grasping to the existential reality, there will be no liberation, will there? Because they will be grasping on something that is not. Though also for those who, who, who deny his existence, meaning nihilists, the one who were to hold the nihilist points of view, the non-existence of things, they will not attain higher rebirth, for they deny any good results coming from practicing virtue, because they deny the existence of good uh, effect coming from good results, this nihilist approach will not give, give them higher rebirth. So since it is impossible and difficult to hold both the view of existential and the nihilist view, namely eternalist and nihilist view, uh, it is it is as it is important and is difficult to juggle the nihilist and eternalist view together. Uh, it is it is therefore uh, better to oneself abide in the state that which nullifies this very dichotomy. Therefore, he says, why would not I dwell in a state of mind that is free or deprived of these two extremities of eternalism and nihilism? So, the, the gist of this, uh, this uh, alludes or points to the importance of following the middle way that therefore avoids the two extremes of eternalism 
and Aeneism. What therefore follows what is called Madhyamika, or view of the centrist. ま、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で